Welcome to a treasure trove of memorabilia. This is the Buffalo Sports Museum. Someday it could be a real Buffalo Sports Museum. We're standing in the home of John Boutte, who has an unbelievable collection of Buffalo things. And we're not talking just Bills and Sabres, Braves. How about the Stallions and the Norsemen? John, tell me how all this came about. What started you into the world of collecting such Buffalo-themed memorabilia? It started when I was a little kid, uh, going to the games with my dad. Uh, we'd go to the odd, we'd go to the rock pile. I'd go around, you know, during downtimes, intermissions, look for ticket stubs and programs, things like that. Um, after games, we'd go in search of broken sticks. You know, basically anything that little kids would do back in the day, you know, so that's how it started. Now follow us as John gives us a tour of the Buffalo Sports Museum. People ask me a lot what some of my favorite items are, and um, programs and ticket stubs are, are probably my favorite items to collect. These two here, uh, this is the first Buffalo Braves game in their history in 1970, and it's the first program. Uh, you see it's, uh, it's dated October 14, 1970, and the attendance was a paltry 7,100, and uh, down below is the ticket from the first game. It's an unused ticket from the first game, which is extremely rare, hard to find. Then the next night, uh, October 15th, 1970, the Sabres played their first home game at the Odd. Uh, it was against Montreal. Uh, unfortunately, they were on the losing end of a 3 nothing score. And um, historians say that if it wasn't for Roger Crozier that night, they could have been 10 nothing. He made 47 saves in the game. So he, he, he kept us in the game. And, and this is the program from that game. And, uh, again, an unused ticket, which it, it's... I've only seen one stub from that game, and to find an unused ticket from that game is, is amazing to find it. The odd always held a, a fondness in my heart, and uh, some of the odd items that I have that I was lucky to accumulate, um, what you're looking at is a, a panel from the scoreboard, uh, the Braves panel that was used, and um, it's, it's so much bigger in person than it is you know, up on the, when you looked up on the board. So that's kind of cool. And then uh, behind it is the um, two seats from the orange section, which most people remember as being the seats that they sat in. The oranges are always talked about fond fondly. Uh, this is a recent acquisition. I just got this this week. Um, an old uh, Buffalo Bisons fan uh, back in the day. He was, a, he was a little kid going to games at Offerman Stadium, and uh, they used to wait on Woodward Avenue for home run balls to come flying over the fence and uh, one day sure enough uh, here comes a, a Luke Easter home run ball right over the fence uh, he got on top of the ball and uh, after the game came up to the stadium and got Luke Easter to sign it so it's a genuine International League Luke Easter baseball home run uh, another favorite area collecting that I have are pennants or flags or banners are sometimes called um, one thing about Buffalo, we were, weren't short for professional teams. We had a lot of different teams in Buffalo, just not just the Sabres, Braves, Bills, Bisons. Um, the Stallions soccer team, uh, we even had professional softball. The Buffalo Breskies um, had a team here in Buffalo in the late 70s. We even had a tennis team. A lot of people don't know that we had a world team tennis team, the Buffalo Royals. Some of my favorite pennants, uh, this one, this Sabre one right here, um, that was a first-year Sabre pennant that was um, delivered to the odd two days before the season opener against Montreal. And um, I was told by Paul Whelan, publicity director for the Sabres, that when he first viewed it, that the Sabre emblem was the colors were reversed. And um, having none other pennant to sell, they decided, well, we'll sell it anyway. So it's kind of a mistake. It's one of those things that uh, just happen and... In the second year, they corrected the logo to the familiar blue background and white buffalo. An item that I was just thrilled to, to be able to acquire is a piece of the uh, basketball court from the Memorial Auditorium. And when you think of all the games, all the basketball games that were played on that court, uh, the Hall of Famers that played on that court, it's, it's, it's mind-boggling that it's, um, you know, to, to think of that. And anyway, here's a piece right here. The, uh, the famed odd basketball court. A lot of young fans, uh, hockey fans in Buffalo, don't even know that um, hockey originated here in Buffalo with a team called the Bisons. 
Um, the Bisons were the American Hockey League minor league team that played here in town from 1928 to 1970 when the Sabres came in. And a cool thing about the Bisons is their jersey in the late 50s and 60s reflected a uh, Pepsi-Cola cap. And the owners of the team, the Pastors, uh, owned Pepsi-Cola. So what they did is they came up with the idea to use the Pepsi-Cola bottle cap with the Buffalo Bisons and uh, made that their emblem. And for many old-timers, this is, this is hockey in Buffalo, the Buffalo Bisons. The sign says Buffalo Sports Museum. Tell me about the goal someday, what you'd like to do with all this memorabilia. I, it's, it's nice to have, and it's nice for my friends and family to appreciate, but uh, I, I believe that this belongs in uh, a museum where all Western New Yorkers can appreciate it. A lot of this stuff is rare, one-of-a-kind uh, items that, that needs to be preserved, and if I'm not around anymore, it needs to have a place where uh, it can be uh, viewed by families uh, for years to come. So that's my goal, is to have a museum somewhere where everybody can enjoy it. Our thanks to John Boutte for the fabulous tour. You can see many more of his amazing items at his website, buffalosportsmuseum.com. For the Buffalo News and buffalonews.com, I'm Mike Harrington.